Toyota pushes back on U.S. EV goals, saying they are impractical. A bit of truth right there. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, here today with the amazing Elizabeth. This past weekend, Toyota Corporate met with its U.S. dealers and shared interesting insights into the future of Toyota's EV plants. Automotive News reported on the event in an article titled, Toyota CEO Akia Toyota says ambitious targets for electric vehicle sales in California or nationwide will be hard to achieve by 2030 or 2035. I kind of like the fact that the guy running Toyota, his name happens to be Toyota. <laughs> Makes sense to me. Before we dive in, think about what you've come to know about Toyota as a company. Based in Japan, the company has the highest brand loyalty among car shoppers, putting out cars that are rumored to run forever. Just ask Scotty Kilmer. Yeah. In fact, Toyota and Subaru are nearly tied for first place in auto brand loyalty as reported by Business Insider. Going further, the Japanese are in general hard to fool or bamboozle with illogical ideas. I say good on Toyota's CEO for being honest with his U.S. dealers. CEO Akia Toyota said regarding California's mandate that will ban the sale of gasoline-burning vehicles by 2035, realistically speaking, it seems rather difficult to really achieve that. He added that a national goal of 50% zero emission vehicles by 2030 would still be very difficult. Whether you agree or disagree, Mr. Toyota is at the helm of a huge company and he's obviously no dummy. No. I commend him for seeing the big picture, thinking it through, and saying out loud what many have been thinking privately. Toyota serves 200 different countries around the world, which includes about 1 billion people who need transportation who don't have access to reliable electricity not counting Americans. It would be foolish of the company to think only of U.S. regulations as their guiding light instead of the worldwide customers they do serve. Toyota is very convinced that plug-in hybrids are the best short-term solution, while the long-term goal of hydrogen combustion is more compelling. Commenting on EVs, Toyota said, they are just going to take longer than the media would like us to believe. He pledged that his company would offer the widest possible array of powertrains to propel cars cleanly. Mm -hmm. That's our strategy and we're sticking to it, he said. He also went on to explain that Toyota is like a department store which offers all sorts of vehicle types, sizes, powertrains, etc. for customers to choose from that best suit their own needs. You gotta love this quote. It's not right for the department store to say, this is the product you should buy. Mm -hmm. And that, my friends, is exactly what's been happening in recent car markets. At first, people thought of many solutions for vehicle improvements and changes as a means to an end of reducing carbon emissions. But now, after the idea is on the table, why are other manufacturers so bent on racing to the finish line of all electric vehicles? Why are only fully electric vehicles promoted when clearly there are other solutions that are much better at solving the carbon problem if indeed it is a real problem? We've shown how massively anti-environmental it is to mine lithium for EV batteries, and we never even mentioned all the hazards associated with cobalt. Someone needs to be honest and say out loud that electric cars are a means to a very expensive end. It's like the goal is to put the average American out of being able to afford transportation and therefore not be able to live independently. Hmm. Mr. Toyota's plan for hybrids in the short term is much more practical than anything put out by domestic manufacturers many state governments like California, for example, and even our own federal government. And that's not to say Toyota hasn't invested in electric because he committed 8 trillion yen so that by 2030, half of Toyota's vehicles are battery electric. While it researches other ways to figure out zero emission vehicles, it may surprise some to know that electric cars are not the only answer. Exactly. Toyota expects its sales of fully electric vehicles to reach just 3.5 million by the end of the decade, or just over a third of its current global volume. That sounds a ton more realistic than what many others are proposing. The company also plans to introduce 30 EVs by 2030, but even its large investment plans are less grand than those of General Motors and Ford Motor Company, two of our domestic manufacturers who are notorious for ditching one vehicle after another for as long as they've existed. For as long as they've been around, yes. Yeah. Toyota's luxury Lexus arm aims to have a full lineup of BEVs, battery electric vehicles, in all segments by 2030, and for BEVs to make up all of its global sales in 2035 in Europe, North America, and China, totaling 1 million globally. In addition, Toyota has committed $3.8 billion to build a factory in North Carolina to make batteries for the EVs and hybrids. Toyota said a lack of sufficient infrastructure in the U.S. will hold back aggressive EV adoption rates, which is a factor in Toyota's decision not to go all in on electricity 
to the exclusion of hybrids, hydrogen combustion, or hydrogen fuel cells. It seems that Mr. Toyota has his arms around the greater truth on the matter of electric vehicles. Now for a little information update for our viewers driving diesel trucks out there that use DEF, diesel exhaust fluid. One of the benefits of the MPG X-CAP is that it produces a cleaner burn of the fuel, and many DEF users are reporting to us that they have reduced need for diesel exhaust fluid when using the X-CAP in their fuel. X-CAP reduces emissions, reduces toxic gases, and reduces the need for DEF, and also reduces the need for inconvenient and expensive diesel particulate filter regenerations, or DPFs. That's right. And here's another interesting fact for viewers out there driving a car that requires premium fuel. This is especially for you owners of turbocharged cars. You are the drivers on the road who spend 67 cents a gallon or more on average yeah. for your premium fuel. But perhaps you didn't know that one X-CAP boosts 16 gallons of gas by 6 to 8 points, bringing standard 87 octane fuel to 93 to 95 octane. When you buy the ISR pack, you get 100 X caps for $199. So for $2 each, one X cap, you get the premium fuel you need without paying premium fuel prices. Saves you over $11 every time you tank up and you get a better running vehicle to boot. For you, it's not about improved fuel economy. It's the savings gained from the opportunity to buy cheaper 87 octane fuel, saving 60 cents a gallon at every fuel up while getting the same performance. If you have questions about the XCAP, email us at kevinthehomeworkguy at gmail.com or call text to 701-441-3399. I'm always happy to help. All right, if you're new here at the Homework Guide, don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell. We welcome you aboard, and of course, please share our videos with family and friends. Thanks to everyone for coming back. To all of you faithful followers out there, you guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, signing off with the amazing Elizabeth, the Homework Gal. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.